Hello everyone, it is September 22nd, 2012. I'm just going to jump right in. Psychopolitics. The art and science of asserting and maintaining dominion over the thoughts and loyalties of individuals, officers, bureaus, and masses, and the effecting of the conquest of enemy nations through mental healing. Editorial note. Between May 2, 1936 and October 10, 1939, a man named Kenneth Goff, John Keats was his alias name, was a dues-paying member of the Communist Party. He voluntarily appeared before the Un-American Activities Committee in Washington. His testimony can be found in Volume 9 of that year's Congressional Report. This is what he had to say. He attended their school, which was located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and named the Eugene Debs Labor School. They were trained in all phases of warfare, both psychological and physical, for the destruction of the capitalistic society and Christian civilization. They went thoroughly into psychopolitics. The Art of Capturing the Minds of a Nation Through Brainwashing and Fake Mental Health. They were taught that the degradation of the populace is less inhuman than their destruction by bombs. For to an animal lives only once, any life is sweeter than death. He stated that he noted with horror the increase of psychopolitical warfare upon the American public, first in the brainwashing of our boys in Korea, then in the well-financed drive of mental health propaganda by left-wing pressure groups, wherein many of our states have passed bills which can well be used by the enemies of America to subject to torture and imprisonment those who preach the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and who oppose the menace of communism. The communists definitely stated you must recruit every agency of the nation marked for slaughter into a foaming hatred of religious healing. Another example of that warfare that is being waged can be seen in the attempt to establish a mental Siberia in Alaska, which was called for in the Alaskan Mental Health Bill. A careful study of this bill will make you see at once that the land set aside under the allotment could not be for that small territory, and the bill within itself establishes such authority that it could be turned into a prison camp under the guise of mental health for everyone who raises their voices against communism and the hidden government operating in our own nation. As a psychiatrist, I remember very well the condemnation by the American Psychiatric Association of Soviet psychiatrists and the Soviet Union for their use of psychiatric techniques and psychiatric medications to control political dissidents. Sadly, shockingly, we in the United States have become those same oppressors. We now have a policy as exemplified by the FBI brochure from the Phoenix Office on Counterterrorism, which says people who are defenders of the U.S. Constitution against federal government and the U.N. and make numerous references to the U.S. Constitution should be monitored as potentially murderous and fanatical terrorists, by extension, should be considered mentally unstable. Under the New Freedom Commission, mentally unstable people must be medicated on a compulsory basis with lethal and untested but very profitable psychiatric medications. Psychopolitics, 
The book was used in underground schools and contains the address of Beria to the American students in the Lenin University prior to 1936. The text in the book, in general, is from the Communist Manual of Instructions of Psychopolitical Warfare and was used in America for the training of communist cadre. In its contents, you can see the diabolical plot of the enemies of Christ and America by various sinister means. This manual of the Communist Party should be in the hands of every loyal American, that they may be alerted to the fact that it is not always by armies and guns that a nation is conquered. Kenneth Goff An address by Beria But first, who was Beria? Lavrenti Beria one of the cruelest leaders in a regime known for its brutality. He first reached a position of power by working his way up to the police organization in the Soviet Republic of Georgia. In 1938, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin summoned him to Moscow to work as a deputy to the chief of the Soviet secret police. Within months, the chief had disappeared and Beria had replaced him. During the purges of the 1930s, many Soviet leaders issued lists of people they wanted arrested and shot, but Beria may have been the only one who personally got involved in torturing his victims. His cruelty also included rape. He was known to have teenage girls picked off the streets and delivered to his office. Beria's control of the police made him an extremely effective, if ruthless, administrator. As one of his colleagues remembered, an order from Beria was a matter of life and death. So it's an indication of the importance Stalin gave to the Soviet atomic bomb program that he appointed Beria to head it on August 7, 1945, the day after the U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima. American students at the Lenin University, I welcome your attendance at these classes on psychopolitics. Psychopolitics is an important, if less known, division of geopolitics. It is less known because it must necessarily deal with highly educated personnel, the very top strata of mental healing. By psychopolitics, our chief goals are effectively carried forward. To produce a maximum of chaos in the culture of the enemy is our first, most important step. Our fruits are grown in chaos distrust, economic depression, and scientific turmoil. At least, a weary populace can seek peace only in our offered communist state. At last, only communism can resolve the problems of the masses. A psychopolitician must work hard to produce the maximum chaos in the fields of mental healing. He must recruit and use all the agencies and facilities of mental healing. He must labor to increase the personnel and facilities of mental healing until, at last, the entire field of mental science is entirely dominated by communist principles and desires. To achieve these goals, the psychopolitician must crush every homegrown variety of mental healing in America. Actual teachers of James, Eddy, and Pentecostal Bible faith healers amongst your misguided people must be swept aside. They must be discredited, defamed, arrested stamped upon, even by their own government, until there is no credit in them and only communist-oriented healing remains. You must work until every teacher of psychology, unknowingly or knowingly, teaches only communist doctrine under the guise of psychology. You must labor until every doctor and psychiatrist is either a psychopolitician or an unwitting assistant to our aims. You must labor until we have dominion over the minds and bodies of every important person in your nation. 
you must achieve such disrepute for the state of insanity and such authority over its pronouncement that not one statement so labeled could again be given credence by his people. You must work until suicide arising from mental imbalance is common and calls forth no general investigation or remark. With the institutions for the insane, you have in your country prisons, which can hold million persons, and can hold them, without civil rights or any hope of freedom, and upon these people can be practiced shock and surgery, so that never again will they draw a sane breath. You must make these treatments common and accepted, and you must sweep aside any treatment or any group of persons seeking to treat by effective means. You must dominate as respected men the fields of psychiatry and psychology. You must dominate the hospitals and universities. You must carry forward the myth that only a European doctor is competent in the field of insanity. Psychopolitics is a solemn charge. With it you can erase our enemies as insects. You can cripple the efficiency of leaders by striking insanity into their families through the use of drugs. You can wipe them away with testimony as to their insanity. By our technologies, you can even bring about insanity itself when they seem too resistive. You can change their loyalties by psychopolitics. Given a short time with a psychopolitician, you can alter forever their loyalty of a soldier in our hands or a statesman or a leader in his own country or you can destroy his mind. It may happen that remedies for our treatments may be discovered. It may occur that a public hue and cry may arise against mental healing. It may thus occur that all mental healing might be placed in the hands of ministers and taken out of the hands of our psychologists and psychiatrists, but the capitalist thirst for control, capitalist inhumanity, and general public terror of insanity can be brought to guard against these things. Should independent researchers actually discover means to undo psychopolitical procedures, you must not rest. You must not eat or sleep. You must not stint one tiniest bit of available money to campaign against it, discredit it, strike it down, and render it void. In a capitalist state, you are aided on all sides by the corruption of the philosophy of man and the times, you will discover that everything will aid you in your campaign to seize, control, and use all mental healing to spread our doctrine and rid us of our enemies within their own borders. Use the courts, use the judges, use the constitution of the country, use its medical societies and its laws to further our ends. Do not stint in your labor in this direction. In this country now, we're seeing drugs cradle to grave. In fact, it's not just in America, it's in other countries also. Children as young as two years of age are being put on certain types of drugs to decrease the amount of their aggressive tendencies. When they're evaluated and felt to be just too aggressive at two years of age, they place them on a drug. All the way up and through high school into adults, and of course we know how the adults are being affected by drugs like Prozac, Zoloft, well, butrin and being placed on these for all kinds of reasons. The drugs are being used all the way through the adult period of life into the geriatric. When I was a director of nursing in, in a nursing home, I would see these people being medicated so severely to keep them quiet, to keep them from doing anything, having any feelings. They were easier to maintain in bed than they were to get out. And this is a horrible situation that we have evolved into in this country. And of course, now with Alzheimer's, it makes it even worse the medication of these elderly people. So we have now a system that finds a reason to medicate everybody. Now this is absolutely bizarre when you consider that freedom of fill in the blank is what this country is all about. And yet, under the guise of a diagnosis, whether it's accurate or not, these people will then be forcibly drugged and helped or hindered, who knows? Who knows what will happen as a result of these de deleterious drugs that are given in combinations and amounts that many times are not safe.